Stranger Things Season 1 released on Netflix back in 2016. Now, I haven't seen it since then, so I really needed to rewatch it, and I'm so glad that I did. It's one of those shows that when it first dropped, everybody was talking about it. It was the talk of the town. Hey, watch Stranger Things, and I don't like being told what to do. So I didn't watch it for quite a bit. I don't remember exactly when I finally sat down to watch it, but it was when the hype kind of was dying down and everyone stopped talking about it. So when I finally watched it, I was like, oh, God, why wasn't I watching this before? So I ask you to take my hand and join me as we venture into the Upside Down and revisit Season 1 of Stranger Things. What's up everybody, welcome back to The Hess Project. I'm John Rodalaza and today I'm gonna to be talking about Stranger Things Season 1. This is, like I said, a show, a series of episodes that I have not seen since it came out. I probably saw it a couple times, maybe I saw it with my mom, I'm not entirely sure. This noggin needed some refreshing, so I revisited the first season, binged them all in like two, three days maybe, and man... This show's so good. Like, I forgot how amazing this show is, how great the writing is, how incredible the actors are. Let's let's go right into it. Winona Ryder is arguably the best actor in this entire show. She is she is. Credit to the kids. They're some of the best child actors working today. They started very young. They were actually like 12 and 13, I believe, but Dude, Winona Ryder is something else in this show. The distraught in this woman's performance is raw and visceral, and I'm convinced that she legitimately lost a child in real life in preparation for this show, because it's it's unmatched. I have not seen a performance that really just grabs me and makes me feel all kinds of sad. Second best in the show, it's David Harbour. I mean, can you blame me? He's so good in here. This is where I really started to fall in love with his acting. The first time I ever really saw him was in Green Hornet with uh, uh, Seth Rogen. <laughs> He's just an asshole villain in there, but he's capable of so much more, and this show just, it shows you, dude. It shows you that these actors, they, they got it in them, and this doesn't give you a whole lot of his character in here. You don't get a whole lot revealed about Hopper, but you get just enough to make you want to see more out of him. You want the story to progress, and you want to see what Hopper's been through. Why is, does he drink? Why does he smoke? Why... Tell us why. Well, I mean, you're not gonna get an explanation why they smoke. They they just do, I don't know. But the drinking, that that leads to something, kind of. Now, I do not mean to belittle the, the child actors at all by saying that the two adult actors are the best things about the show. It's nothing against them. It's just, dude, they're, like, they're, they're adults and they're amazing in their roles. But the kids, man, they, they really crush it. I could not imagine seeing a bunch of kids in a show like this all being good. Like, what? Like, that's a... Ugh. I'm not going to remember all the child actors' names in real life. Just their characters. Uh, Mike... Uh, I already forgot them all. Okay, so Will, I know Will is another one. He goes missing in the first episode. And thus, that starts Winona Ryder's character going kind of crazy very sad, very obsessed with finding her son because she believes that nothing happened to him. He's not dead or anything. He is missing. He went somewhere and something has him. She hears voices. The phone rings a couple times and she hears his breathing and she becomes even more obsessed with it. Thus, the unraveling of the Upside Down. The most crazy, creepy thing I've seen in a while, they really tiptoe into this obscurity level. They don't go all in, but they, they just tease you enough to where you're like, I want more. I want more, and it makes you press that uh, play next button so fast. I'm telling you, this is the fastest I've ever pressed that button. I want to know what happens next, even after like uh, seeing it six some odd years ago when I was rewatching it recently. I was pressing that button. While David Harbour and Winona Ryder really brought it in the acting department, I think still the kids are the heart of the show. It's about them. It's about their relationship with each other. It's about them finding their friend Will because they love Will, man. They, they always goof off and, and make fun of each other, but they love one another, man. It's that weird kid mentality where you don't want to fully put your emotions out there. You kind of just make fun of the, the friend. You know, it's, it's like that kind of relationship. 
And it's done so well, man. Their relationship between the kids is done so beautifully. It's real. It feels real. It doesn't feel like they're saying things for the hell of it. They, they are really smart kids, though. Don't get me wrong. They, they meet up with their teacher after school about this new uh, radio that contacts different countries, I believe, or different continents. It, it's pretty cool. I don't know. I, I really enjoy how in tune these kids are with science. So it's kind of an out for them being a little bit smarter than the average kid, though. They don't have dialogue that makes them seem too uh, sophisticated. You know, I have that issue with some child actors that will say things that a child shouldn't say. I, I don't really get that vibe with these kids because they're so well versed in the science. They're nerdy kids, so it's kind of they're out. Then you have this whole subplot with Jonathan Byers. He's uh, Will Byers' brother who went missing. Uh, he's got a whole thing for Nancy, who's Mike's sister. There's a lot of siblings in here, so bear with me. Uh, then Steve is in the mix. Steve is a really cool jock character. I, I really like his style in the show. I think he's really funny. Nancy's pretty good, too. I think all of these uh, actors, they, they play to their strengths with their, within their characters and it's done very well. None of them really annoy me. So that's a plus. No young actors annoy me. Then we get to Eleven, of course, played by Millie Bobby Brown. I remember her name. <laughs> she is really good in here, honestly. She's probably the best out of the, all the child actors, despite not having that many lines. It's because she's very shy and she keeps to herself because she was experimented on and kind of tortured in a sense by scientists. It's a real dark reveal as we go along with the show and once we get to seasons two and three, you're gonna get more and more reveals. But man, I, I, I really did feel for her in this season and I also quite enjoyed once she gets to know the, the boys and they're nice to her in a sense. I mean, uh, just Mike really, cause he likes her. But here's the real kicker. Here's the, the, the kids out when they are in the forefront of some crazy stuff that goes down. Eleven has powers. <laughs> she has telekinesis and she can do some pretty badass stuff and she does some pretty badass stuff in this show. I guess the real novelty of the show is the great acting, the groundedness that you feel within these characters because none of these characters are above and beyond outside of Eleven but she's not, you know, she's not doing things and levitating things with her mind every second you see her. This show feels very grounded but it has that horror sci-fi element to it that that really is intriguing when you think about it, man. Winona Ryder is so good in one particular scene that I feel in concept is very cheesy and funny, but she's so good she makes it tense and real. She's in uh, Will's room, I believe, with Jonathan. They're talking about Will, and then she tells him, hey, I'm gonna try to communicate with him talking to these lamps. And <laughs> Dude, when Nona Ryder is so good, she can be talking to lamps, and you don't have a goddamn thing to say about it other than, gee, lamps, answer her. Anyways, the end of the season happens. Uh, Eleven kind of blows up. I don't remember. I have to rewatch season two to figure out exactly what happens. Point is, Will is found. He's brought back to safety. They venture into the Upside Down, both Hopper and Winona Ryder. I'm forgetting her name. Joyce. That's her name. Joyce and Hopper go into the Upside Down. They find and save Will, bring him back. It's all nice and dandy until he goes into the bathroom in their house. And he has like a, a flash vision, like he blacks out for a s split second and sees the upside down. It's like that specific spot that he's standing in. Because the upside down is like a mirror dimension of where you are in the real world. So he kind of has a vision. He sees visions now of the upside down. And that's kind of cool. It teases what could happen in season two. So... I, I really enjoyed myself revisiting this show. This first season, it's so good, it's so tense. The acting is unlike none other. It's some of the best Netflix original content I've ever seen. Hats off to the Duffer Brothers. They had something great on their hands and I'm so glad that people got to watch this and that it got all these extra seasons because I love obscure stuff like this, and season four looks obscure AF. So thank you for joining me on my review for Stranger Things season one. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Be sure to check out my reviews when I post them for Stranger Things season two, Stranger Things season three, all in the lead up to the two-parter of Stranger Things four. It's gonna be crazy, and I cannot wait to revisit this show in its entirety, so you might wanna stick around, because there is more to come.